Ah, oh, hell. I'm in the wrong game again. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you may on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you into the Let's Play episode of Angels with Scaly Wings, Anna's Path. So yeah, before we jump right in, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is up for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel and get some awesome rewards in return, like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. All that for as little as $5, y'all. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> I trust him, but after what happened, he doesn't trust me anymore. Now, there's only you. The mythical, the special, the new. How much I wish I could make him see what I see. I could have saved the world. I could have saved the world with what I did that day, and it still wouldn't matter when no one believes me, just because I don't have any proof. But I won't stop until I find some. And when I do, I'm gonna be a damn hero. And with that, he was gone. On the way to the police station, Maverick's words kept finding their way back into my mind. I couldn't decide how to feel about them. I wasn't even sure if it was worth mentioning to the police, since all he did was make vague accusations. It wasn't anything substantial enough to be considered a threat. However, his actions were growing more calculated, and he seemed very sure of himself. I wondered about what this could uh, what this could amount to, but that wasn't the problem at hand. Hey, Keegan! Hey, Sebastian. I thought I'd meet you at the front desk. What are we doing in Bryce's office? He does have a nice office, doesn't he? And the chairs are comfy. Is that the only reason we're in here? The dragon gave a brief chuckle. Let's just say that any information pertaining to this case is important enough to warrant some privacy. I see. Will Bryce be here anytime soon? I don't think so. He's still outside looking for Reza. He's not the kind of person who gives up easily. That's Bryce. That's Bryce for you. Once he sets his mind on something, he sees it through the end. That's why he's our chief. He's get, he gets things done. At this rate, it doesn't look like we'll find him today. He could be anywhere, long gone, beyond our reach. What do you think? I don't think he's going anywhere. He can't flee to another place. No matter where he goes, he'd be recognized immediately. In the end, his only way out is the same way he got in, the portal. And he can't use that without someone noticing. Very astute observation. I wonder what will happen to our trade agreement now, considering Reza's still missing, the murderers, and the stolen generator. If Reza really is the murderer, then... Don't do that. What? Worry. You don't know what's at stake here. People are dead, Keegan. Do you think I don't know that? Reza may be our prime suspect, but he's also a missing person. For all we know, he could be a victim. Maybe someone is making him do this. My point is, we don't know the facts yet. What we need to do is find him and find the murderer. We'll find Reza and go from there. We'll figure it out. Anyways, you said you had some information for us, so what did you find? The receipts you got are interesting. There might be something more to them, or they could just be a useless record of his eating habits. You never know what you, you, never know what you might find out about a person, their habits, or their plans this way. I'm not sure if there's anything special about Anna wanting Reza's blood. I mean, she's a scientist, so it's natural that she'd be interested in something like that. I'll have to talk to her about it, though. Maybe she has some more details for us. Well done, Keegan. That gives us some solid points from which we can continue our investigation. In any case, thanks for your help. We really do appreciate it. You're welcome. That should be all, then. Since Bryce still hasn't come back, I assume the search is still going on. And I'd better get, I'd better get out there and help him. This is going to be a long day. Can you find your way back to, back to your apartment? Of course. Alright, see you later. Good luck. Finally, some free time. Whatever am I gonna do? Looks like there are some messages on the answering machine. Let's see. Please leave a message after the beep. Gotcha! You thought that was your answering machine, but it was me, Aideen. I know we talked about me coming over again, but I thought, why not mix it up and you come to me instead? I mean, it's not like you can it's not like I, I can use your excuse and pretend to order something from you. After all, you don't even have anything to sell or deliver. Unless Well, I don't think you're that kind of person. Oh, I do hope this is the right number, or someone is going to be very confused. Well, she did get the right number, and I'm still confused. Hey, I just wanted to update you. I still don't have an open spot in the facility for your test, but I'll be free if you want to cash in reward. You know I'm busy, so this is your chance for your date if you even still want to go through with it. Take it or leave it. I don't care much either way. In any case, you know where to find me. I guess the choice is mine. You had two messages waiting for you. I wonder why. Let's meet with Anna.
All right, water time, y'all. Give me one second. Mm. Delicious. And just on time. Now, where is she? Hello? What's this? Looks like a message. Something came up with it last second. Wait for me. It shouldn't be too long. Anna. I guess that the last second is meant in a literal sense here. Or else she could have just called me. I guess we're playing the waiting game, then. Okay, it's been like an hour and my patience is slowly but surely running out. Wait. I've already waited this long. Guess I can't wait a little longer. I'm not sure who the world who the world record holder for most patient person is, but now I feel like a contender. Still no sign of her, though. Wait. Well, if she doesn't show up soon, I'm done. There you are! Where have you been all this time? Reading comprehension must not be your strong suit, because my note clearly said I'll be, I'd be back soon. Note to self, the word soon now refers to a time span of over two hours when waiting for a scheduled appointment. Has it really been that long? It certainly didn't feel like it. Alright, sorry for making you wait. It happens to me all the time. I guess we missed our movie. Can't we see the late screening or something? That was the late that was the late screening. The theater's closed now. Maybe we should reschedule. That won't work, at least not for me. Today was the only day I could leave early. I won't have another chance anytime soon. So what do we do now? Maybe the coffee place is still open. I don't know. I guess that's better than nothing. The fuck are y'all doing drinking coffee this late? Jesus. Closed as well. That's just peachy. Why do you keep working so late anyway? Because what I'm doing is important. You're doing cancer research, right? And who told you that? Damien. I stopped by your lab some time ago, but you weren't there. That shardborn bastard! What else did he tell you about me? Nothing much. The whole thing wasn't really about you anyway. I see. Sounds like you two don't get along that well. That's the understatement of the century. Being trapped in a small room with the likes of him for hours on end every day is a scenario born of a sick mind with the intention of making me suffer as much as possible. It certainly doesn't make my research any easier. The stress probably doesn't help you either. And it's not worth jeopardizing your health over. Don't overwork yourself. You can't save anyone if you're dead. If I don't find a cure, no one else will. No one else can. Besides, I was only late today because I got your stupid blood work ready. You have the test results? Yeah, want to know what I have to say about them? Definitely. Okay, how much do you know about genetics? A little bit, I guess. Don't worry, I'll put it into words that are easy for you to understand. To start off, I found that, on average, about 90% of your genes are... are homolog... are homo homologous? Homologous? Are homo homologous to our species' genes. That may seem like a lot, but to put it into perspective, about 50% of your DNA is also shared with fruit. Further elaborate... You and your human neighbor back home are probably around 99.9% .9 genetically similar. If you compared the very, the very sentient, uh, very sentient species we have here to each other, it would only be around 95 to 97% similar. And as for what exactly all this, all this tells us, although a match of 90% sounds like a lot, it's not as much as you might think. Still, for two beings from a different world altogether, that's quite remarkable. Beyond DNA, the biggest similarity between us is within the brain structure. But that's not surprising, considering our high-level cognitive abilities. That'll surprise Maverick. What do you mean? He doesn't seem uh, to like humans very much. I'm sure he'll be just pleased to know how similar we are. No, he doesn't like anyone, really. He's just like me in that way. Yeah, you two could make a great couple. You're a little late for that. I'm already his ex-girlfriend. Really? How did that go? Not not how you th might think. It actually went pretty well, for a while at least. But in the end, we both got too absorbed in our jobs until we realized we had drifted apart too much and agreed it would be better if we just broke up. I still respect him for the work he does. I mean, we even used to solve crime together. I'd be in the lab running tests and he'd be out on the field chasing after the perps. Those were good times. I guess nowadays he just chases after me. What? I don't know, maybe I shouldn't say that, but if you know him, maybe you can help me out. I certainly can't help you out if you don't tell me what's going on. Okay, but this is just between us, alright? Sure, whatever. Maverick is convinced that I'm the accomplice of a crime. He made a point to tell me that he's searching for proof to legally arrest me or worse. Thank you, y'all. Water time. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that. Really? It's nothing. He can't find any proof that doesn't exist. Still, it doesn't feel nice to be threatened and stalked, especially by someone like him. Ah, that's just him. He gets way too into it once he sets his sights on something. 
I noticed. It's his job. What do you expect? I wish he'd just leave me alone. He wasn't always like this, you know. A couple of years ago, he was assigned to this one case. He was still relatively new on the force, young and eager to help. Then reality came crashing down on him. There was a serial killer who shook up the whole town. The victims were apparently eaten. We later found out that the killer's actions were the result of a degenerative disease, which brought his feral nature to the foreground. At that point, he was just a wild animal, turned into a cannibal that hunted under the shadow of night. Everyone in town was up in arms, terrified that they'd be next. The police did everything they could. A curfew was instated and patrols guarded the streets at night, and they found him munching on his fifth victim. Poor little Maverick was not prepared for what he would find. Oh boy. Stand back, Maverick. I'll handle this. M miles It was his brother. Step away from the body, Miles. Miles couldn't comprehend their words and only saw rivals who wanted to take away his prey. And he wasn't about to just let go of it without a fight. Miles raised his head from his kill, blood dripping from his maw. The officer's breaths were smothered by the deathly stillness of the night. Fangs bared, the feral dragon snarled and stood strong in front of his meal, prepared to protect it from the two who intruded upon his territory. Whatever this is, Miles, it's over. Don't make it worse now. Ah! In an instant, Miles was upon Bryce. It clashed in a flurry of teeth and claws. Miles had the advantage with the small frame and quick movements, and Bryce could not get in a clear hit. It all happened so fast that Maverick didn't know what to do. They rolled on the ground, and Bryce ended up on his back, as helpless as a turtle. Miles pinned him and clamped his jaws on his neck. Bryce's claws were the only thing preventing Miles from biting down, and they were slipping, slick with blood and quivering with fatigue as he tried to push him off. For a brief moment, Bryce thought he'd meet his end, but when the jaws suddenly relaxed and he was able to dislodge them. When he looked up, he saw that Maverick had managed to get Miles from behind. He bit through his brother's neck from above. Blood flowed from Maverick's jaws and over Miles' lifeless body. Bryce had been saved, but the young dragon wore a wide-eyed, empty stare. Jeez. Jesus Christ. Maverick blamed himself for not taking better care of his brother. He knew Miles had problems and was taking medication for it, but he wished he could have done more to help him. The medication wasn't the right one, by the way. Maverick takes solace in the fact that he was able to save Bryce, but he's never been the same since that incident. Now he scrutinizes everyone and everything. I'm not sure how that's supposed to help me. It doesn't, but now you know why he is how he is. It's not unusual for him to act like this, so you might just have to wait it out. Anyway, let's get back to your test results. Since you were so interested, did you want a copy of them? Yeah, I'd appreciate that. No problem. I'd heard you also I'd heard you also wanted Reza's blood. Of course, I invited him over too, but that was before you arrived here. And I thought that and I thought that what we had was special. Oh, it is. Reza was too stuck up. Was too was too stuck up to agree to anything. Okay, now water time. He wouldn't even participate in an exhilarating round of trivia board games. Not even that. Can you believe it? I can almost see the sarcasm dripping from your mouth. Still, it's kind of a shame. It could have been interesting to compare your blood to his. But a shame indeed. Let's just enjoy our romantic date in the back alley of a coffee shop. Of course. Unless you want to take this someplace else. What? You don't like hanging around dirty back alleys? Heh. <laughs> Uh, I'd rather be someplace. Hey, I bet you've never had a date in an alley before. I haven't. I'm sure I ever wanted to. Where's your sense of adventure? Oh, hang on. There it is. Yes, I can feel the adventure kicking in. I'm getting kind of hungry. I figured we'd be having a meal on our date. What? Can't you go a few hours without having to stuff your face? I could offer you a handful of dirt, but if that's to your taste, Keegan. I already have, I already have my own dirt. Sorry, but I already have my own dirt. Oh, really? What kind of dirt would that be? Only the finest governmentally funded dirt from Tatsu Park. Your filthy back alley stuff has nothing on this. You win this round. Either way, a side dish would be nice. I know this one place that never closes. Let's go there. Sure. Ha! A farm. Of course. After several minutes of walking, Anna led me to the outskirts of town. We arrived at a farmhouse. On one side, fields stretched towards the horizon. On the other were lush green hills with fenced populations of animals. Alrighty. 
All right, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks. Or, or I'd say check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, I love you all. See y'all in the next video. Bye-bye.